My name is Lacey Ward. I'm a director of the Robert Russell Moden Museum in Farmville, Virginia. And I understand the topic today is uh, Black History Month, which is coming up, of course, February every year. The Robert Russell Moden Museum is at the former Moton High School in Farmville, Virginia. It's a national historic landmark. And its significance in America's history is that out of this high school, a group of students in 1951 started a strike that forever changed the face of American public education. A young girl, 16-year-old Barbara Johns, who was a junior at the time, decided that segregation just wasn't working in her best interest. And she thought uh, that as a citizen of these United States, she was entitled to better educational opportunities, better educational facilities. And so she convinced 450 of her fellow students to go on strike. Uh, a pretty amazing story to get 100% participation from a student body. When these students went on strike, they then, of course, wanted to know, well, how do we make change come about? And it's a relationship between the students and the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or the NAACP, uh, that results in the filing of a lawsuit. And many of you have heard, of course, of the case Brown versus Board of Education. Not a lot of people know, though, Brown is actually five cases. There's the lead case, very famous, which comes out of the state of Kansas. But there are also cases from South Carolina, Washington, D.C., Delaware, and this one case in Virginia. Brown, of course, decided in 1954, at the time, the Supreme Court said, we call now for an end to separate but equal in schools, public in our public schools. We call for an end to separate but equal education. Now, not everyone agreed with the Supreme Court's decision, particularly the states of the South. And the states of the South, or the former states of the Confederacy, put together a, a proposal which was called massive resistance. And through massive resistance, they tried to find ways to not allow integration to happen to not allow for the mixing of races in classrooms, that all students might go to the same class. They didn't want it to happen, and so they said, we won't let it happen. And honestly, it went so far in Prince Edward County, Virginia, that by 1959, uh, five years after the Brown decision, forced with integration, forced with allowing black students and white students who had previously not gone to school together to be in one building together, they just shut down public school entirely. Can you imagine a county in America in the 20th century where public education is not even offered. Not just no high school, not just no middle school, no elementary, but no school whatsoever. And this situation existed for four years. So for four years, there, you know, all the routines you know, no after school rehearsals, no back to school sales, no school lunches, no buses running, and, and people just wondering, when will we get past this log jam? I'm here at the National Education Association Conference because the NEA was a big part in 1963 in finding a way to reopen public schools in Prince Edward County, Virginia. The NEA recruited 100 teachers from around the country who were willing to come in at only a month's notice and put together a school system. And when they went into the schools, they found uh, classrooms that hadn't been cleaned for four years. They found bathrooms that were inoperable. They found buses with flat tires that hadn't run for four years. But through sheer determination and partnering with other organizations around the country, they found a way to reopen public schools. And so what did they do when they reopened the schools? Uh, what do you do when you get a, someone who shows up who's 10 years old, it's their first day in the classroom, they're going to the first grade, they have to learn things like how do you hold a pencil, how do you form your alphabet? Well, they just dug in and they had class, you know, Monday through Saturday, very intense tutoring, heavy emphasis on the arts. Uh, things like multi-age, people from different ages were in the same class together. Students helping students, teachers helping students, teachers helping parents, a whole community effort. And it was a very successful year, known as the free school year, 1963 to 64. Uh, so much effort went into the classroom that year, so much effort went into learning, that the average reading score in Prince Edward County advanced two years in only one year's time. It's just an amazing story. Uh, at the Moton Museum in Farmville, we try to tell that story. If you can't actually visit the Moton Museum in Farmville, Virginia, you can always go to the website, www.motonmuseum, and I better spell that, M-O-T-O-N, museum, all one word, www.motonmuseum.org, for an exploration of the transformation from segregation to integration within one small Virginia community, one community that was at the center of the Brown decision, one community where educators, students, parents, the whole community made a difference it helped us move forward as a nation. Please visit the Moat Museum when you have opportunity, either online or in person. I'm Lacey Ward, I'm director, and thank you for your time.